Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in with another lesson now. As if you don't know, a lot of my videos are 30 minutes to one hour. And the reason being is because I like to do deep dives and like to try to sew things up and not leave a lot of holes. Because when you do these short videos, it's so many caveats and nuances to this that you kind of got to go through these things and talk about it from different angles so my videos a lot of them now there are short ones that's five to 15 minutes but a lot of them they're intended for just to play while you're working or while you're driving or in the background even if you're going to sleep to it and really want to be real with you on these things and understand that this my perspective but i'm in the field doing the work i'm not on the porch you know i'm in the field dealing with the people hearing from the people and this one of the things that what i'm seeing is so many single black women now here's the thing when you just look and you you look around and you count and you do the math for yourself it's hard to tell how many black women there are and how many black men there are like we don't really know and they'll report numbers but they don't really know either not down to the exact number and we all know that a lot of black men are lost to the prison system so there are millions of black men in prison we could guesstimate at least one to two million or more and so that's a lot and then you have the men who are not into women men who are gay and then you have the men who they don't want to be married they don't want to be in a some don't want to be married but they're okay being in a relationship and then you have the ones who they they don't even want a relationship so when you take out those four categories of men then what are you left with and that's the problem that we are facing and it's a lot going on now one of the things that has been noticed as well just in general observation and I want you to do this and I want you to pay attention to this we because of a lack of education you lack the understanding of life your body presentation all of the things that happen in life so one of the things you'll notice like if you go go to a football game or well, I say football game basketball game baseball game and count the amount of white women hispanic women black women and start doing the numbers in your mind and, and just kind of making your own little thing like making your get your own little notepad and do your own research just so you could kind of start to see and i want you to as you're walking through the mall or you can go to the mall as you walk through the mall look at the obesity rate and what i mean by obesity not not even saying some people think obese means you know like this but meaning over the weight you should be for your height and yeah for your height and you can look at the chart online and start to see the obesity rate and one of the things you're going to notice is that a lot of women of color because of our eating habits and because of the way that we were raised because of the trauma and, and it's not about just it's not about self-control because food for a lot of people is a love language food is comfort food it helps deal people use food to deal with their trauma to deal with their pain to deal with their loneliness and one of the things that i noticed 
is that there are a lot of women of color and I typically see black women and white women in the areas that I'm at not all it's Hispanic and Asian as well but not as much and when I look at that I notice a lot of Caucasian women and I think it could do with education it could do with just programming it could have something to do with just how they were taught how they were raised and it's a lot of nuances here as you'll notice because if a woman is a housewife and she wants her daughter to be able to get a husband so that she could be a housewife as well because she sees the benefits in being full-time with the kids then she's going to raise her daughter to be a wife and then if a woman is a single mom and she is upset with men or she's over men she's done with it and she understands the benefits of being strong and making your own money and having your own she may raise her daughter to be an independent woman so whereas one woman will raise i found that and that and listen this ain't argue about everybody experience is different that's why i say look around in your life and start to do the math and don't let none of this step on your toes you know just get the message but what i found a lot of housewives of whatever race if they're happy and happiness is you know subjective if they're somewhat happy like they're not ready to jump off a bridge or nothing they learn a lot of times the benefits and the things that you need to do to be in that position and they will teach that and depending on how they're viewed will determine how their daughters see them so if or how they're treated so if a daughter sees her mom be a housewife and she's treated like a queen she's treated amazing then she could see the happiness and the benefits if she sees the dad talk down to her mistreat her you know treat her like she's less than and she's like whoa i don't want that life and so a lot of times you'll see this dynamic and housewives raising other housewives and single independent women raising single independent women and it's just based on their experiences and so this plays into it as well so now one of the parts with pornography being so prevalent and i did a video titled why are men lonely or something like that being that pornography is so prevalent men are seeing these bodies on computer screens and now adult men adult black men are looking for these bodies but most of your women are not super concerned with physique meaning a lot of black women are concerned with paying their bills going to work and earning a living and a lot of minorities in general is going to work and earning a living and they're going to have their fupa i don't know what that means but when we talking about that little that little pouch in the front they're going to have that they're going to have you know their booty go to sagging they're going to have you know their stomach they're going to have their arms and they're going to have meat on their bones and the gym just doesn't become that important because it's like listen i got to go to work i'm alone i'm tired i'm a single mom and i ain't got time to be in the gym five days a week an hour every day and then but when you look at the housewives they a lot of times if they don't have to work they have time to be in the gym and the crazy thing about it was my wife and I, we, we, we went on a vacation. We were on a yacht and we were on the, the Ritz Carlton yacht. And the day we got there, we just were walking around looking at everything. We just got to the boat, to the yacht. We go to the gym 
And it's people in there working out. And it's like, we, it's like, I don't know what time it was. It was like three or four in the afternoon. And it was like the first thing they went to do that then when they got on the yacht is work out. Like the first thing we went to do is order room service. And it was people in there, I mean, busting their butt, working out every day. I'm talking about working out so hard, sprinting on the treadmill. And it just really showed me the difference in the demographics. Like we worked out two or three of the six days. You know, I know I went in there two times. I think my wife went in there three times, maybe four times. But just to see how hard them people was in there working out, how long they was working out, how hard they was sweating. And they were all of another race. And neither time that we go in there that we see any one of the eight black people that was on the yacht. But, and it was like 200 and... About 200 people on the yacht. It was probably 10 of us was black. And I was just paying attention to this. And I'm noticing this. And so here's the thing. A large part of this as well is preparation for marriage. So I remember talking to a black woman. And she was single and she was frustrated and she said, Tony, I want to be in a relationship. And I had this form that I would send to my clients, just like questionnaire of women who would say this. And there, and for a lot of women, a lot of women get upset about this, but, and that's the problem that we have is men can't be honest. Women can't be honest. And so we don't have a real dialogue, but somewhere I noticed Somewhere in the white race, they found the ability to be honest with each other to make their relationships better. And I saw a, a white lady the other day talking about she was a single mom, single working mom. She left her husband and she talking about her and her best friend be talking about just dating each other. I could look at the woman and tell she liked women. And so she putting it on the fact that she left her marriage because her husband worked, but he didn't do any housework. And it's like, man, if you like women, just say you like women. Because you're not finna lead no whole marriage because your husband not doing housework. This man ain't cheat on you. This man ain't put no hands on you. This man going and working and paying the bills. You mad because he ain't helping you around the house. That's why you divorced him. Come on now. What's the real reason you divorced that man? And now you talking about you and your female friend talking about just dating each other and raising the kids on a compound. Come on now. Tell the real truth. What I notice is that if you aren't raised for a relationship, you don't know how to prepare for a relationship. And this is one of the things that I was talking to a young lady and she was saying like her on one side, she had this strong single woman as to look up to. And on the other side, she had this strong housewife to look up to. And the strong, independent, single woman taught her nothing about femininity. She learned everything about shaving, about sex, about how to wear a dress, about just how to carry herself as a lady by the housewife. The strong, independent woman was working two to three jobs. So she just didn't have this energy, the time to teach. She just was extremely strict. She just was, no, you can't go anywhere. No, you can't have a boyfriend. No, you can't do this, but didn't teach, didn't say, this is why you can't have a boyfriend. This is why you can't spend a night at such and such house. This is why you can't go out to the club. But then over here, the, the beautiful fit housewife was teaching, this is how you shave. This is what an orgasm is. This is what sex is like. This is how you wear your bra. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. This is how you walk. This is how you have posture. 
So the woman learned how to be a lady in the sense of, you know, femininity. And so when I was talking to this one young lady, she, she was probably in her late thirties, early forties, and she was ready to be with a man. And now listen, she was hardworking. She was a hardworking single mom. And on the questionnaire, it had a bunch of questions, but some of the questions was, how often do you get your hair done? Do you paint your nails? Do you arch your eyebrows? Do you like get your hands and feet, manicures and pedicures? And all of her answers were no. Like, she doesn't get her hair done. She didn't paint her nails. She never wears nails. She didn't arch her eyebrows. She didn't get facials. She didn't get massages. Like, she just was roughing it. Making great money in a great position and just was roughing it. And needless to say, she was offended by the, that line of questioning well not the questions it was my response to the questions i was like how can you expect to attract a man if you're looking like a man i ain't say it like that but i was saying like it's no difference between the man and you if you don't shave your legs men don't shave their legs so if you don't shave your legs a man can't tell the difference between his legs and your legs and I see a lot of women of color with hairy legs and with hairy underarms. And this also is playing into it. So your single man, he's looking at, and this one thing that my wife always makes mention to because she has a Hispanic friend. I don't know if that's Hispanic, but I think she's from Venezuela. And she talks about and, and my wife, her hair, she gets her hair um, done. It's this thing called the best, called best or something like that. But there's some type of hair thing that you put in, you know, her type of hair. And it kind of makes your hair straight, you know, like bone straight. And it's not like a perm, though. It's just different. It's not, it's not damaging. It actually makes your hair healthier. But she goes to the Dominican. Is a Dominican lady who does her hair. And then I think her eyebrow and a lot of her recommendations come from her Venezuelan friend. And one thing she always mentions is about those type of women. They're very feminine. They always got on heels or like the high wedges. They are waxed every inch of their body or laser hair removal. And the same thing like with the Caucasian women. When we go into the spa, like to the place, the wellness place, them women are in there getting facials every four weeks. They, they're getting just all kind of enhancement, whether it be filler or Botox or cool sculpting for their body. Like they literally could be this big and have a half of a cellulite and they're going to get it taken care of. And so the thing about it is it's a level of self-care that goes in that we aren't taught as minorities. Like as a minority man, I had to realize I was not taught how to brush my teeth properly. I wasn't taught how to brush my teeth properly. And so when I got to a certain age, I noticed my cousin who was raised by a single black mom, he did not brush his teeth. And he had perfect teeth he never had braces but his teeth were like the perfect shape perfect smile he, just in the teeth area he them genetics was perfect i i'm like wow who in the world get genetics that they have straight teeth and never have braces even after losing the teeth and teeth growing back in like lord why you do all our mouth like that but he didn't brush his teeth and what he did, he got a toothbrush, he wet it with water, and he and he brushed his teeth with water, not toothpaste. 
And that really confused me. But then guess what? Me being in the bathroom with him in the morning because he moved in with us to live with us because his home situation was real messed up with his mom. And they, she would fight him all the time. I stopped brushing my teeth. And so I'm brushing my teeth with water. And then when I went to the private school with the all white kids, I started to realize that I didn't know how to shower. I was not never taught how to shower. I was never taught to wash my booty hole. I was never taught how to properly shower. I wasn't taught how to shower. I wasn't taught how to brush my teeth. I wasn't taught to wash my face. So I didn't have a, like my sons, they have a face routine because my wife has learned that. She learned that as she, you know, started to grow and get older. She didn't necessarily have that either. When I first met her, not that deep. Everybody just used Clearasil or Noxzema. And so I, it was when I became an adult that I really started learning about hygiene. When I went to college, I called my dad and I was, I kind of went off on him a little bit because I realized I, I was, he, he never taught me how to shave. He never taught me how to shave. He never taught me how to tie a tie. I never was taught those things. So the thing with minorities is that we're ignoring is a lot of us a lot of minorities are single a lot of black people specifically in america is single because we are not raised for companionship we are not raised to be with somebody we are not taught how to be attractive to somebody there's a small segment that's taught how to properly groom themselves to, to be presentable in a respectful manner. A lot of times when we look around, if you notice it, there's either no grooming, like no presentation of a person, men and women, or there's a seducing spirit, a seducing presentation. So what we would call sexy, a lot of times is a woman with a skin tight dress and her butt cheeks are basically hanging out or she's wearing nothing and then we will see that as presentation and but that comes from the sex worker culture of strippers and prostitutes and so women then say oh well so women then say and now listen, these tough conversations. And so you got to have thick skin. If you want them soft, sensitive people, this not the, this not the channel for you. We really going in over here. Okay, we talking about real life issues, and I'm gonna call it like I see it, and it's gonna be real now. So women oftentimes say, "Well, oh, well, the men are liking on Instagram. They're liking all the big oil down booties. They liking the big booties in the thongs." And they ignoring the other women. And the reason being is because a lot of times the presentation of women is one extreme or the other. So there's no presentation, meaning the woman doesn't shave her legs just because I, I feel like it's just laziness. A lot of times I feel like it's just because just tired, not, not, I wouldn't say laziness, just like it's a production. Like I saw a woman, you know, we were somewhere and there was a woman who was dressed really nice and had a voluptuous shape. And when she raised her arm, she had Whoopi Goldberg under there. She had Whoopi Goldberg in a headlock. And, but everything else was done, like makeup, hair, nails. So, and I just couldn't compute, like, how can you be done up so nicely and have Whoopi Goldberg under your arm? Like, as, as a man, I just, men, we don't see hair on a woman as feminine. We see hair as masculine because we have a beard and we have underarm hair and we have pubic hair is men are now actually shaving their pubic hair and 
I'm not really, you know, I understand a little trim, but when you shave them hairs and they start to grow back, it go to itching. And I always see Caucasian women, and this to the Caucasian women, because a lot of Caucasian women, before laser and waxing, will shave. And they and so the daughters be shaving instead of going, because I'm, I'm guessing because they minors, they be shaving. And instead of waxing or what have you. And when I'm out and about, I'll be looking around. I'm a people watcher and I see all the time I see Caucasian young girls like teenagers scratching their vajay or scratching their booty hole and they just literally just be I'm gonna pretend this I'm gonna pretend this a vajay they'll be and I'm gonna pretend this a booty hole they'll be And I know exactly what that feel like, cause I done shave, I done shave. And when I was younger, trying to be whatever, sexy, I done shave. And when that thing start to grow back, that thing be itching. So, but guess what they have now? They have laser hair removal. So it's a lady on TikTok and she's a black woman and she is overweight and she has that, that thing that you grow hair under your chin and so now she's making money by by getting paid by waxing companies and things like that who have the wax that you put the wax on and you peel it off and she does that and she says listen I don't mind doing this I enjoy doing this you know it doesn't bother me people say why don't you whack I mean why don't you get laser hair removal she's like I don't mind doing this and it's like ma'am Ma'am, if laser hair removal will take care of the problem, go get laser hair removal. It's not even that expensive. And they have a credit card called Care Credit that you can get and you could finance it on that card. Like if you're tired of shaving, go get laser hair removal. And so here's the thing. A large part of this single epidemic is black men and women not being raised for marriage, not being raised for companionship. So there are a lot of men, and I see this from women, women saying, oh, I like him, but he doesn't know how to dress. I like him, but he has bad hygiene. I like him, but you know, his breath stinks or he doesn't brush his hair. And literally, that just comes from not being taught. And I noticed this with lower income families in the white race, black race, Hispanic, you know, Asian. Lower income a lot of times also coincides with a lack of education and a lack of preparation for the world, for life. And so when certain races and demographics make money and they elevate in the world, they understand what it takes to elevate. They understand what it takes to go into these circles. And so that culture and being cultured, you will notice that minorities, a lot of minorities who come from lower income order well done steak from just not knowing not traveling and not understanding not having the knowledge of how meat is cooked and how it's supposed to cook and where the flavor resides and at what temperatures is the most flavor they just say well done but with experiences and traveling and different opportunities you start to learn and you start to experiment and you start to see different things and so you'll notice a lot of wealthy white people order their steak medium rare and 
rare plus medium rare plus and at the most they're gonna do ever is medium and a bougie person of color is gonna do medium well and I started to experiment and try just so that I could learn I've had medium rare I've had medium rare plus and I eat my steak medium and sometimes it is too red sometimes it's a little blood and uh, and I'm like Ugh, I can't do it but I try it just to stretch I had raw fish um, can't remember the first name the last name was crudo on the yacht I had raw fish and I ate one I could have threw up I ate another I could have threw up but I did it just to say to experience and it had caviar on it as well but I did it because I want to get the experience to see what are these people who make more money than me who have more than me who travel more than me who see more than me who do more than me what are they getting out of this how can they eat this like what is it about their mindset and see your mindset has a lot to do with where you are in life because what you're not willing to do someone else is willing to do but what you're not willing to do if it's not against your religion, then you could just be not doing something out of fear or out of ignorance. So a group of people that I was with on a project sat down to do something that I felt was sacrilegious because they were gonna be channeling other spirits, spirits other than the Holy Spirit. So I did not do that. I didn't care where they come from, how much money they make, where they going, who they are. I'm not going to do something that is against my core beliefs. So I'm not ever asking someone to do something that is against their religion or their core beliefs. But you have to ask yourself, why won't I get my eyebrows arched, threaded, or microbladed. Now, if you just will pass out from the pain of getting your eyebrows microbladed, I get it. It's not worth it. But getting them waxed or threaded or whatever, if that's going to enhance your look and make you look more presentable, then why not do that? Why don't I get manicures and pedicures if you can afford it? and it's gonna make your hands and feet look more presentable, then why not do that? If you can afford, or you have great credit, and you can afford the payments on your 0% APR care credit card, why not go get laser hair removal if you hate bending over to shave your ankle and calf and thigh and your legs are super long? Why not go through the process? Why not go get a Brazilian wax or go get laser hair removal? If you want to be, if you know the hair, the bunches of hair is producing an odor and you can shower all you want to and five minutes later because of the corroboration of hair there is a odor and that odor then could lead to a fungus and so why not go clean that up and so when we ask ourselves we got to ask ourselves why am i not why don't i go and get braces i can afford the 99 dollars a month or i have a credit card that i can finance myself with without interest so that i'm not going into debt per se and i'm not uh, i'm not against interest because it's i call it the cost of doing business it's the, well that's what everybody call it it's the cost of doing business so i'm not one of them finance people that want you to look a mess and 
because they're afraid of a credit card. It's like, listen, that's the cost of doing business. And people, you're going to need them people to help you buy your house. So if you didn't pay them a few dollars in interest on that little raggedy credit card, when it's time to buy the house, they're going to say, listen, you're a good business partner because you understand I'm taking a risk lending you this money up front. So you giving me a little extra on the top for me taking this risk on you. Thank you. That's business. But for those of y'all that, you know, in that, all that right there, go right ahead. Do what you do. I'm finna, I'm finna lay off. So why not do that? And this is the difference. And this what's happening is these men who are ready, they come into the table and you have to ask yourself if both women are smart, if this woman is smart and this woman is smart and this woman is strong and this woman is strong. This woman is beautiful. This woman is beautiful. But this woman over here does not shave. And this woman over here shaves. And this woman over here doesn't shave private areas. So it produces an odor. And this woman over here shaves private areas or waxes or laser hair removal. Private areas. So it doesn't build up a, a sweat and an odor. So when a man has to choose between that and you can invert it and you could, you could reverse that and put it as a woman, this man is handsome. This man is handsome. This man is smart. This man is smart. But this man over here brushes his teeth properly. So he doesn't have an odor on his breath. And this man over here brushes his teeth with water like me and my cousin used to do when I was in middle school, he was in high school. So he has an odor on his breath. And let me tell you something. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you something because it's something that we need as black people that we don't want to talk about. And we don't want to be real about and nobody talking about this. But I'm going to be I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm be honest with you. When I was a secular man and I was a womanizer, whenever I dealt with Caucasian women, no matter the time of the day, they never had an odor down there. And so, and, and whenever I dealt with black and Hispanic women, there was a good amount of them that had an odor. Now, all I can equate that to, I don't think it's genetics. It could be genetics. We have to talk to a doctor because it's certain genetics could produce more you know, pH or what have you. But the difference would be too is just how you're taught. And so my mama used to tell me at her job, white women didn't wear panties. And they didn't they didn't wear panties because they felt like the panty up against their vajay produce moisture and sweat and odor so that's why a lot of them didn't wear panties now should have one wear panties i think so but then on the other side what i would notice is with minorities the pubic hair would be it, it'd be at least this hill thick this hill thick and sometimes about this hill thick Sweat starts at hair follicles and sweat in hair is going to produce an odor and that sweat going to be running down into the woman and that sweat have salt in it and so that that sweat that salt is going to be sitting in the woman 
and that's going to start to ferment. It's going to start to cause a, a, a little something in there because that's interior, that's insides. And so when you remove that sweat, you remove that hair, you remove that sweat, then it's going to be different. It's not, it's going to have a different odor. And so what I would notice is that it'll be in the minority women, it'll be a strong musk. It'll be a strong little. And then in the Caucasian women, it'll be like, it's like water. Like you, like this here water. Now this Zephyr Hill, Zephyr Hill ain't the cleaning water. Now it's brain water. But it ain't no smell to it. And that's, that's just, that's the God's heaven's truth. And then the same thing I found about white men and black men. As black men, we had a strong must. I ain't talking about in no area now, but just our body, our odor, because we weren't taught how to bathe. So we would stink. We would have a strong odor. And then the white guys, they, they would shower a lot of times in the morning and at night. And so they could play a whole practice or a whole game and you still couldn't smell them because they starting from a clean base. And I remember in high school, my white homeboy started trying to kind of throw hints. When I wanted to brush my teeth, well, I had one black homeboy. Every time he got in my car with me, he'd be like, and the AC be on, he'd be like, you smell, you smell that? You smell like doo-doo. I'm -doo. like doo-doo. Every time he got in the car, he would say that. He was kind of trying to say to me, bruh, like, hey, like, brush your teeth. And like we'll be on the phone getting ready to go and he'll be like yeah man i'm about to get dressed and brush my teeth I'm gonna go ahead and brush my teeth so i start to catch on and like i really ain't catch on till later when i start to learn about hygiene and, and right now, a lot of people who have listened to this, you're going to be like, hmm, have I taught my son how to probably brush his teeth, how to probably wash his booty hole, how to probably wash his any? Uh, hmm. So this was a thing. And this is where education, a lack of education, a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding sweat glands, a lack of understanding fungus, a lack of understanding odor, just a lack of knowledge. It leads to us being less desirable and it leads to us being less attractive because we're not as prepared. We're not as presentable. And I remember being with one of my homeboys, he was a white guy and he was rich. You know, his parents was, they had a billion, billion, multi-billion dollar company. And their company did about 15 billion a year. And so they were, of course, multi-millionaires. And I would go over there and everything would be nice. It would be pristine. Everything nice. And I remember one day, I, I thought about this later. We're in high school. I'm probably 10th grade. And he said to me, he said, hey, um. Do, do you do you shampoo your pubes? And I was lying. I was like, yeah. I ain't no shampoo. No. I was like, yeah. He was like, he was like, I do, because I'm thinking like it's hair. It's no different than the hair on my head. It's hair. So why not shampoo my pubes? And we had finished practice or like warming up. And we were sitting there, and we'll go. He would take me because I was the star player, 18 points a game. And he was like, he was good. He played down low. He was a, he was a heavy set guy, but you know he was gonna get playing time because his family donated money to so much money to the school. They basically owned the school. His family basically owned the private school, and so heavy set guy. And and he, he was pretty decent, but he wasn't you know like a star or nothing. And he would take me to his house before the game. And I had this Michael Jordan documentary 
that I love to watch. And he would let me watch that. And I remember when he asked me, do I shampoo my pews? When I look back, I remember I could smell a little hen on me from sweating and having pubic hair. I could smell a little hen on me. And I never smelled him. And that was the difference. So this is the thing. We are not being raised and prepared for a relationship. We're not being raised and prepared to be presentable in love. And so a lot of times with minorities, we have poor hygiene, poor eating habits, poor working out, poor exercise habits, poor money habits, poor living habits. And when you come into the knowledge of this, you got to start seeking the knowledge. Like you got to get on YouTube. You got to get on Google. You got to learn more and you got to stretch. And here's one thing that I've been thinking that it may or may not be on. It may be on or off base. But this is one thing is that money is currency and money comes and goes. And one thing about money and how we earn it and the amount we can earn, a lot of it depends on your mindset. But if your mind is locked and your mind is, is stuck in this certain area and you're afraid to stretch your mind, then it's impossible for you to make more money. And I noticed this with people and it all kind of coincides together. I noticed this and, and, and I want you to think about this. And it's so hard to put in words, but I want you to think about this. A lot of times the people who have more knowledge meaning they've gotten more knowledge or more education of self. I'm not talking about like book smarts. They make more money. They're in better shape. They look better. They attract love and they live a better life. And a lot of times when you look at obesity and poor hygiene and poverty you'll see some of the you'll see a locked mindset you'll see a uneducated mind that is unwilling to stretch and i noticed this and I, I see this like it'll be people who they'll say no i'm not gonna try that they're in another culture, they're in another country, they're in another place. I'm not going to try that. I'm not going to try that. And it's like, listen, everybody here eats this. It's obviously not going to kill you. So why not try to, to see what this is like just so you can say you tried it, but more so than that, so that you could unlock the part of your brain that has so many limiting beliefs and so many restraints on you. Because that's the same part of your brain that is locked, that is keeping you overweight, that is keeping you underpaid, that is keeping you trapped in your location, in your pay grade, in your demographic, in, in your situation, because you are afraid to stretch. You're afraid to be better, to be different. And so guess what? As an adult, as I was growing up, my dad, I would see him work out sometimes, like on the bench press. He would go outside and lift weights. But other than that, I never saw my dad work out um, too much. On, on like, well, he bought a treadmill. He would get on the treadmill. My dad would actually work out sometimes. I never once in my entire life saw my mama work out. I never saw her work out. Think about that. Think about never seeing a human work out. And that leads to our, a lot of our issues. And when we come into the knowledge of it, we have to create the structure and the habits and the patterns to break through. And when we start to stretch our mind 
and we start to love ourselves more, our connectivity is going to increase. Our rate of love, our rate of relationship is going to increase because we're going to be more open-minded as people, meaning we're going to have more education because we're learning more about the world. Again, don't think I'm talking about degrees. We're learning more. So that means we're going to have better connectivity, meaning we're going to be able to relate to one another much better and we're going to have much better conversation. But we're also going to be healthier and being healthier, we're going to be happier. And in that, we're going to be cleaner. We're going to be smarter and it's going to make us want somebody more and they're going to want us more and we're going to want love more and we're going to want to grow and we're going to want to stretch. We're going to want to travel. We're going to want to make more money. So when me and my wife went on this vacation, we probably were the poorest people on the yacht. And when the yacht people called me about the last payment, I did the typical thing that people from my group would do. I said, uh, yeah, I need an extension. I need a little extension. Can I uh, pay a little later than the payment date? Cause I got some money moving around. I got to move some money around, but they created this rich Carlton yacht for people who don't have money moving around issue. So the lady was like, uh, no, if you got to pay late, we will refund your deposit and we'll sell your, your room. But it just was me being broke minded, being scarcity minded because that's what I come from. And I deal with that. Like me dealing with my people, people who buy something and then lie and say that they never bought it. They didn't, they didn't log in, put their name, email, credit card number and hit purchase. Oh, I ain't buy that. I ain't buy that. That must was an accident. I was just looking around. I don't know who hit purchase. I ain't never click purchase. Be in the email saying this. I'm like, wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, I bought it, but I changed my mind. And it'll be like always on the 30th or the 31st and rent due on the 1st. Yeah, I changed my mind. I don't no longer want it. Broke minded, scarcity minded. Guess what? All of this correlates. All of this correlates. So when you broke minded, you scarcity minded. Let me get my paper. Cause remember we had that paper and I had y'all writing down, writing down stuff on the back of the paper. And some people emailed it in, but I ain't tell y'all to email it in yet. Lord, I love the paper. All of this coincides. All of this goes together. So when you think about this, Lord, I lost my paper. I had the paper. So I had everybody writing down, writing down the numbers. And I would say, I will say number six, write this down. I might have gave up on it. I'll find it one day. I might have gave up on it. <clears throat> All of this coincides. So when you think about this, this all go together. This mindset, this limiting mindset, it all goes together. So when you afraid to get out your box, you afraid to, when you don't have what it takes to work out, when you won't work out three times a week, when you won't explore better hygiene, 
a face routine. My wife gave my sons a face routine. So they already breaking the norm. And she makes them shower all the time. Like they never get to skip a shower. I probably, the only time they gonna skip the shower is when she gone out of town and it's with me. And I just feel bad for them. Like, man, you ain't got a shower, man. That doesn't happen like two times. But in my son, 15 years, he probably done missed two showers. That's unheard of for boys. That is unheard of. And we smell them when they get out of the shower. Smell their neck. Smell under their arm. Smell a little hint. Got to go back in there. Teaching them hygiene. They brush their teeth every morning, every night. They wash their face. They got a three-step face routine. Got the face wash. You got the, the moisture in between. And then you got the moisturizer. Like the, the hyaluronic acid step two and the moisturizer. And just hygienic. They they know they fingers, their hands and their toes. Fingernails and toenails get clipped every week. They hair get done every week. Get washed, combed out, because they, they got longer hair. Got washed, combed out, moisturizer, conditioner, everything. Hygienic. They clean, they smell good. They got deodorant and they got cologne. Both of them have several colognes so that they always have a good smell. When they hug somebody, They, my, my youngest, he hug all his former teachers here in third grade. So he walk and hug every teacher from preschool three, preschool four, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. He hug all five teachers before he go to his third grade class. And when they hug, oh, you smell so good. Hygienic. So their breath smell good. If we smell some on their breath, Go brush your teeth. And now we got the timing toothbrushes to where it time you before you switch to the next session. It feel like you brushing your teeth forever. I'm, and now as an adult, I'm like, man, are you supposed to brush your teeth this long? Are you kidding me? But that's what to do. So now my 15 year old, he done went through braces. He got the best smile in the school. He got the whitest teeth. He got the straightest teeth. He got the best skin. My son don't have any at his age group, he, he he had one bump, like, for the first time, like, last week or something. But all his friends have, like, the, the little normal acne. Like, my face was a mess when I was his age. I didn't wash my face, though. I didn't have a face routine. I didn't wash my face in the morning or at night. I wash it with some dial soap sometimes. So I say that to say, when my sons become adults, when... They don't have to be at the height requirement. They ain't got to be six foot. They might be 5'10 like their daddy. But when a woman look and say, okay, this guy's 6'1", but his teeth are 14 carat, and his breath stink, and his nails are dirty. You see, look at my son. He 5'10", but his skin is glowing. His teeth are white. His teeth are straight. He's not musky. He smells good. His clothes are nice. His shoes are nice. Like my son don't go to school with no wrinkles. We see, listen, no wrinkles. And so I'm telling you, we have to change the way that we take care of ourselves, that we present ourselves, and that the way we see the world. We got to elevate our mindset. We got to stretch our mindset in order to have more connection. And this starts with how you raise your kids. And a lot of times we don't want to get in there and get intimate. But this is what these other races are doing. They get in that bathroom and they teaching their child how to properly bathe. Uh, and see how I said bathe? <laughs> That's our problem right now. Bathe. They teaching their child how to properly bathe. They teaching their child how to properly brush your teeth. And guess what? You might be an adult watching this and you might not even know how to properly brush your teeth. Look up the YouTube video. How to properly wash your face. Look up the YouTube video. What enhancements are out there for you that's not surgery? So it may be laser hair removal. It may be waxing. It may be braces. It may be 
something else, cool sculpting. It may be just the gym, just the gym three times a week. Like prepare your mind, stretch your mind, and I want you to challenge yourself, and I want you to try sashimi if you're not allergic to fish. Try sashimi one time, or sushi. You know, get the ahi tuna, get the tu the tuna poke bowl, poke bowl. It might be called poke. You see what I'm saying? I don't know, but I try, it. and sometimes it make make me gag, but I do it to stretch my mind. And guess what? That that mind stretch helped me do. It helped me think outside the box. It helped me make more money. It helped me become a millionaire. It helped me stretch. When I learn and I stretch my mind, proper hygiene, traveling, eating different things, working out, trying different things, like going to like going and learning, okay, let me see about this here Botox. Let me learn about this. Let me see what this is about. How these guys ain't got no wrinkles in their face. Okay, let me see about these facials. Let me see about these, these hair transplant. Let me learn about this. I'm going to learn about it. So I can say, oh man, that produced confidence. So this man going over here getting Botox, so he ain't got wrinkles all in his forehead. So he got confidence. This man went and got a hair transplant, which is natural. They just pull the hair from places where you got hair is in implanting in the places where your hair gone and now your hair growing that's how he's so confident in the boardroom that's how he's so confident on tv that's how he's so confident on the camera because of what he's investing in himself so that's why his wife jumping his bones and can't get off of him so see when we start to learn this stuff and this stuff gonna be painful for us, you know, to talk about, to think about, and to learn. But all this play into it. All this play into it. So I'm gonna go on to the other side. This was more so from, you know, talking about how we raised as men and women and dealing with the women first and then with the men. But I'm gonna go into the other side of it on how men view relationships and a part of why there's a large amount of single black women based on the other side from men hey this tony gaskin we'll talk soon